have here is a 1998 Winnebago Chieftain, but, but there's an awful lot wrong with this one. You can take some sort of a construction adhesive. You only have to take on these. Right here is collapsed. The sidewall right here is collapsed. On the substrate, so I have to get rid of these that are really bad. And then I'm just gonna put it all in here. One by one, pretty thick walled square tube aluminum here. Be able to walk on these supports. Be sculpted and stabilized. So we can laminate it now. All right, let's get this last piece put back down. The length and get it tucked back in and start putting this whole roof back together. So I still have the long lip sticking out the side. I'll have to trim that down. Done that a number of times on these videos. I still have to cut it to length. So it's a good thing I got a little bit extra because it was a little damage coming in. I pretty much got it centered, I think. I think it looked pretty good. If anything, the whole rear end of this coach is uh, this way some. Because it was right down the middle, and then it started to shift a little bit. It's all very difficult when the roof has been compromised as bad as this one was. And still is, to be honest, because that ceiling inside is really bad. All right, Thomas, thank you. That's my son Thomas again. I probably got him to help me. On the weekend, got the front cap put on. He's gonna hold it as I screw it back down. Oh, yeah, we got the edges tucked today too. What do you think? Seen uh, a worse roof out there? I haven't seen them before. I look forward to the video. <laughs> okay. He does watch the videos though. So let me get this thing screwed down, get the back cap on, cut out some holes, put some vents on. You know what the good news is, Thomas? I put the metal underneath the roof right here. I moved it so that it would grab screws. When Winnebago built it, they put the metal strip right about there. So I was just grabbing eighth inch paneling. Not very strong, but now it's strong. Two more screws. What do you think? A little wavy, but it looks always, it always looks better once everything's on top of the roof. And this is a very wavy roof and it was very collapsed. So lay off. I'm doing the best I can. Right, Thomas? Lay off. <laughs> Dang it. Good morning. I hope everybody had a good weekend. I spent the weekend working on a roof and getting it laid down. Was able to uh, tuck at the edges and get the front cap put back on. And even the rear cap is put back on over here. And overall, I think this is a pretty solid roof. I even managed to put new seals on the roof ACs. So hopefully we have a fighting chance with those not leaking now. But yes, a very strange roof construction on a Winnebago. Remember, this is just tucked in on the side. Nothing holding it in until I seal it in. So obviously the next step is to cut out all the holes, put all the vents and attachments in. Go inside and we'll talk about what the plan is there or not the plan once I'm done on the roof. Okay, so we still have the uh, support inside here. Now I just have to cut out all the openings that we have. Even this rotten looking one for the AC. You can see that support I put in there. And over there to carry the load. And then if we take a look at the skylight over there, it's still rotten in there, but we should be okay. Uh, we have new vents. The owner got new vents. I already showed you that. I'm going to go with the Max fan. And then as far as the uh, ACs go, we have new shrouds to put on. And then I have a replacement skylight to put on there because, well, that one was trash. You saw the rotten roof. So all I have to do is like normal, we'll drill some holes at the corner. and start cutting out these openings. And since the saw saw is broken, I'll be using the oscillating saw.
All right, well, there's one down. And you guys can see how many more to go. Roof doesn't look too bad. Let me cut out the rest of these and then we'll get back on the roof and put everything back together. All right, so back up on the roof here. And I have most of the openings cut open. I still have to do the refrigerator vent, which is right about there, and two sewer vents for sure. Those I'm gonna have to find, because normally I just use the uh, paneling as a template, and quite honestly, there was no paneling to act as a template. But all I really need to do now is what I usually call the fun part, where I get to uh, basically just install all new components, secure it down and seal it. That's kind of the no-brainer part. I already kind of have the ladder installed. I think we'll be able to uh, get this thing put back together by the end of the... tomorrow. Tomorrow. Now I knew exactly about where the uh, refrigerator vent was supposed to go. But I don't know exactly where, so I can start nibbling away at it until I find the foam all the way around, and then I'll have the uh, rectangle following the foam inside. I do have to nibble away at it because I can easily cut through foam. It's not a very good guide. I have to be able to see it. So, hopefully you guys can maybe see the foam's right there and the foam's right there. So I'll just start cutting around and uh, we'll have a good hole. So maybe it's not perfect, but we're pretty close. Exactly where we need to be. I just have to find two sewer vents. So I think it's gonna be right about where that bulge is next to the hole I drilled. And then somewhere around here. So that one I'm gonna have to sneak up on. I had to take some measurements off the walls on the inside. Hopefully about there. pretty close off just a little bit that's okay because <sighs> sewer 5 vent has a pretty good flange on it so pretty good I don't know I think it's still pretty impressive that I found it just a little bit of guessing well I feel like that's the pipe right about there so I don't know maybe I was a lot closer than I thought I was I'm creeping up on it. All right, but that is the pipe right there. Okay, so I can see it there. So right about there. Let's drill this thing out. Whoo! Dang, I'm good. You have to widen it a little bit right there. All right, I've already laid this down, this refrigerator vent, and marked on the roof where it's gonna go. We're gonna be using not beetle tape on a Winnebago roof because uh, there's only eighth inch paneling to screw into and it doesn't compress butyl very well. So we're gonna be using just some 100% all-purpose uh, silicone. I think it's white in this case because the self-leveling silicone laps you don't put on top will obviously stick to silicone because silicone sticks to silicone and silicone itself is a pretty good adhesive so the screws will just be acting as a clamp as the uh, sealant holds up anyways and that's what we'll be doing everywhere else and that's what i recommend doing and that is in general what winnebago uses on their sewer vents and their TV antennas and a few other components anyways. So now I can put that back on, jiggle it in place, because I already have a couple screw holes right there. It'll ooze out. And these will act as uh, nice clamps for that adhesive to set up. I just have to put the rest of them in there. Now, I think it's important for me to reiterate another time, because I try to do this every single time I do a video about a roof. 
This sealant right here, this is the flange. That sealant is the flange seal. This is the primary seal. This is what should keep water out. You should not have to put lap sealant on the top of it to keep this from leaking. If you have a leaking roof component, the flange seal has failed. The lap sealant on top only redirects water. So putting more lap sealant on top really doesn't solve the problem. It's just a quick little band-aid. Uh, if you want to fix the water leak, you're going to have to cut all the lap sealant off and find out why the flange seal failed. That's why the water's leaking. The, the lap sealant on top has nothing to do with actually waterproofing a vent or attachment. Uh, it's completely superfluous. It just redirects water away from the flange itself. So if your roof is leaking out a component, please just don't put lap sealant on top. Take it apart and find out why it's leaking. The lap sealant's not supposed to solve the problem, okay? All right, so I got the skylight on, the refrigerator vent on. I just have to get the, the AC put on, sewer vent, powered fan, powered fan, AC, and another sewer vent. A lot of people ask me how I fix the sewer vent I cut, and well, it's ABS. You can just glue it. There's a union right there, and we put another one on top. Very, very simple. All right, so look at that. We have all the vents installed, skylights installed. You should have to do the ACs and the shrouds, but there's a uh, stubborn screw. Uh, rusted it on that one. And it's getting dark, so I'd rather not worry about that for now. So next step is to do the lap sealant. Again, we're using the self-leveling uh, silicone. This is Hangs. A couple different types out there, but it's self-leveling silicone. We'll just use it as a lap sealant. I can say having this uh, battery powered caulking gun has been a very good choice at this point. So with this, the wiring for the solar panel is still in there. So if they do want to add a solar panel down the road, they still can. I didn't pull it out. Uh, I normally just cut this vermin screen off rather than take the vent off because that's a lot of screws to take out and a lot of work. Let me just finish uh, sealing everything up. Then we'll just get uh, putting ACs back on. All right, well, we're back inside here. I still have the support wall there. This is still gross um, and delaminated pretty bad. But this was not part of my requested work, and I don't think that I have the time or energy to replace this poorly installed ceiling panel. That was a kind of cosmetic hackneyed repair in order to get rid of the coach. But anyway, I just had to put the AC back together. This one has the old style, like a really old style Coleman roof AC on it. And uh, I do like to point out, you can still see the uh, the bow that we put in on that side and on that side. So hopefully as we tighten this up, this will actually kind of uh, add a lot of strength to the roof considering the ceiling panel here is not adding any strength to the lamination whatsoever. Because I still have a lot of concerns that once I take this wall out of the way, the whole thing's going to want to relax quite a bit. So I am concerned about that. Uh, I, mean, I can take a little bit of the pressure off of it by lifting up. Even back here, I added some foam to raise it up when I was... Eliminating it, so we'll see how this goes. I don't know. I don't have the highest of hopes. Well, hopefully, got a lot of clamping action out of there to kind of do a rudimentary <laughs> lamination of the roof or the ceiling there. I don't know. Do you think it'll work? Now the owner did provide new AC shrouds. Now these are more generic shrouds provided by Max Air. They are made to fit. And it makes sense since there wasn't any shrouds on it before. Replacing the AC gaskets and the AC shroud is not a normal service as part of a uh, roof repair. So I can throw those on and be kind, right? But it should pretty much be the exact fit. We'll find out here. Sure does look like it. These uh, shrouds are actually pretty important. They do three things. They direct air across the coils correctly. Uh, 
They do provide a lot of shade and protection to the uh, interior components. You know, like a motor and a compressor and all the wiring from getting UV damage and weathering damage like uh, that one has. But believe it or not, the last thing it does is it's structural. So the back and the front don't have a lot uh, supporting them. So this is kind of independent from this. So having the shroud on top will stabilize your, uh, your condenser and keep it from uh, getting damaged. And I guess it does a fourth thing. It does uh, keep vermin out too. You don't want animals to start building a nest in them. But the hardware you do get uh, stainless steel washers. Which will do a little bit better than the plastic washers that it came with. All right, look at that. AC looks brand new. Nice and secured. Definitely looks good underneath. All right, nice and I don't know, we might have dangerously made a good looking roof. And this 1998 Winnebago Chieftain. All right, before we pull the uh, support wall from the inside and take a look at the roof and see how it holds up to actual uh, use, there's one more thing we have to do on the outside. We're gonna have to uh, seal the uh, radius edge down for this. Uh, we're gonna use a Proflex from GeoCell, it's clear. This is what's actually gonna glue that edge down to the gutter so it doesn't pull back up again. This is a very vital check to do on every Winnebago roof like this. What we're gonna do is get in our gun. Kind of push the radius back a little bit and we wanna inject this in between the radius and the gutter. It should ooze out as the radius push back around. Because this is important. This is what's actually gluing the whole thing down. There's nothing special about this. It's just a foaming glass cleaner. I'm gonna do my best to kind of tool it to make it look presentable. But over time, in the next uh, day or two, this is gonna keep oozing out, which is good, because that means uh, it's pushing both down and up and then gluing the radius to that gutter. I like the clear ProFlex from GeoCell. It's very similar to what Winnebago uses, uh, but more importantly, it, um, it's a little bit self-healing. So even if it does crack, it will get sticky in the heat again and stick again. Whereas uh, clear silicone, once it, the seal breaks, it's broken. It's never going to seal again. And now you'll have to come back and reseal it again. So this stuff is a little bit more durable as far as uh, if it does crack or break. But you do want to check this. Again, at least once a year, twice a year is better. But now I just have to finish doing this edge all the way down, put the awning back in, and then of course do the other side. After that, we'll pull that inner wall support and see if this was off or not. I'm still hoping everything's fine. I'm hoping. Oh well, guys, I think with this, the roof is all sealed up and we're ready to uh, go inside and take the support down. So obviously my biggest concern is that the roof will collapse once I move this uh, support wall out. Uh, I didn't put it up and I didn't see this roof before it was installed, so with the condition of the ceiling as I saw it, I'm still a little bit concerned even though I added the framing in the ceiling. It feels strong when I'm walking on it, but also there's a wall underneath it supporting it, so here goes nothing. So I guess we'll see how this goes. Well, that was quite a relief. So, I mean, it's still ugly up there, but let's take a look at it. All right, I've neatly stacked his lumber back up there because that's like $5,000 there. Now, this trim is what was uh, through bolted into the ceiling, into the roof that I had to pull down before, which I couldn't get to. And I think this was technically load bearing whenever somebody uh, 
fix this the first time. But it definitely was getting wet. And I didn't really show me supporting the ceiling over here because this whole section was had collapsed down. So I had to uh, put some supports over the top of the slide out to uh, push the ceiling up into the, uh, the styrofoam and at least try to glue it together. Uh, this has not been replaced very well. So it did relax a little bit. I think it was just overextended anyways. And so when I lift on it, it doesn't seem to be that bad. Hey, look, you can see uh, my foam. Whew. But I know, let's get on the roof and see what it looks like and feels like. This is the first time I'm gonna get on the roof without that support on. So we're gonna hope that we don't collapse and fall down. But uh, see, the roof didn't collapse and fall down. Whew. I guess the first thing we should do is walk up there first and see what it feels like. I mean, I can walk on it. But I can bounce on it. I don't know if I should anymore. That's about all I feel comfortable doing. I think overall, it's 100% improved the looks of this RV, if you'll be on the roof of it, you'd think that was brand new. And compared to how it was when I first got it and how it wasn't even safe to walk on, I walk around this thing effortlessly. The new AC shrouds turned out really well. We replaced the uh, AC seals too. Did manage to reseal the back cap here. Again, this is self-leveling silicone, not Dicor. If we look over the radius edge here, kind of see how it started to bulge out just like I said it will and that's a good thing because that means that uh we're getting good adhesion all the way down you can see that wall still delaminated pretty well there found these uh neo angle skylights to be a near perfect fit they're a little bit oversized compared to Winnebago's but they're 400 500 dollars cheaper than what Winnebago's currently charging of course we have a new sewer vent the customer provided these vents right there a new sewer vent new refrigerator vent and this does feel very solid everywhere I'm looking I mean I know if I catch the angle just right I can probably see my ribs that I put in under the AC I should be right about there and there but it does feel very solid there and there if we come up to the front here on the front cap like I do on all these uh, Winnebago's, I like to put that lap seal between the front cap and the roof to help redirect water away from the seam underneath right there because all it is is glued down. And Winnebago's are pretty com common to leak at the uh, front caps there. And we got that all sealed. And then of course you can see the screws I added to the side of the cap. Uh, ideally, I wouldn't have metal hardware there, but the plastic clips gave up their uh, their strength after 25 years, and those will work better anyways. And they're stainless. All right, well, I think this has turned out really well, guys. Still has to make a trip back to North Carolina. So there it is, guys, a brand new Phylon laminated roof on a 1998 Winnebago Chieftain diesel pusher. This is so much more work than I thought it was gonna be when I originally quoted the job. Feel a little bit more confident about it because I did have to add those uh, framing across that front AC. I think in hindsight, I probably would not have agreed to do this job. The gentleman had already driven here all the way from North Carolina and I didn't wanna just make him turn around and drive all the way back for nothing. However, I will say this. This coach does have a lot of character to it. It's a very nice floor plan that's inside there. So I can understand why he'd want to keep it. Uh, does have a lot of work to do on the inside, the ceiling. Uh, I feel bad because whoever did the previous repair, I would say they tried and they put a lot of effort into doing that repair, but they should have just done it right to begin with or not done the job at all. It feels a little bit more like they were putting it together, slapping it together to get rid of it rather than to, uh, make sure that it would last for a little bit longer. I hope everybody learned a little bit watching another Winnebago roof replacement. Part of me keeps hoping that Winnebago will be watching these videos and deciding eventually to stop making their roofs the same way they've been making them for 30 years and maybe upgrading and updating the, the process quite a bit. 
The last thing I will leave you with is this though. The reason why Winnebago tucks the edge into uh, the gutter right here rather than uh, screwing it down with a molding is because it does allow this edge to flex a little bit. And these whole boxes do flex driving down the road. Uh, if the, you secure it down, it will start to twist and then it will start to crack. Uh, so that's why Winnebago has uh, done this the way they have done it. It seems like a little bit of a of a strange installation of a roof, but that is why they do it. I just wish they would decide to do it a different way. But thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, that was not a lot of fun, but I hope you enjoyed watching it. Bye. The neighboring adventurer just had its roof ripped off today too. And all that paneling is completely loose from the foam. So if it wasn't for the double-sided tape right here, I think all the paneling would have fallen off. The Phylon stuck really well to the Luon, but the Luon to the foam, there's no glue. It doesn't hold on at all. So it's really just some double-sided tape right there holding down this entire roof, which is why these roofs seem to fail. Seems to be about 2013, whatever the glue they switched to from the foam to the uh, wood isn't holding up. And uh, this is a big problem if your roof is laminated, if it doesn't laminate. All right, well, let me get back on this one because I'm closer to being done with that one. Oh yeah, I forgot. We got an awful lot of rain this winter. The desert is in full bloom and absolutely gorgeous. I still have the best view in the entire valley, I think. But only for a little bit longer, because I think I already have to move shops again. Uh, this might be the last uh, video I do from this location. I don't know. Life gets complicated sometimes, guys. But we'll see how it goes.